Hi Floss Tube. this is Nancy Quilting Stitcher. Welcome to my channel. Sorry, I guess it's right here. Welcome to my channel. Um, if you're new, welcome. Um, if you're um, already a subscriber, thank you for coming back and joining me. Um, I'm going to try not to make this very long. I, I'm trying to make my videos under 45 minutes, so we'll see. Hopefully I can get really close to it. I'll just try not to um, babble on about a lot of stuff. Um, today is the 28th. It is unofficially my anniversary, but tomorrow could be unofficially my anniversary also. We were married on leap day, and so um, every we only really have an anniversary every four years. So technically, I've been married four months, three months, three months? I don't know. Anyway. So my husband, he texted me this morning. He says, because he's out of town, he texted me this morning. He says, happy anniversary. To be honest with you, I forgot. I guess I'm not a big anniversary. Valentine's and anniversary are not big days for me. They're not, to me, they're not a big deal. Because I feel like you need to share your love and love each other all through the year, not just on two days a year. So I, and I had completely forgot. So I told my husband, I'm like, I didn't get you anything for Valentine's Day or for, um, for your for our anniversary. He's like, that's okay. He says, I got you something though. And I'm like, but I kind of knew he had got me something because he was in Hobby Lobby the other day and he says he got me something for Hobby Lobby, but he wasn't telling me. <laughs> so I kind of think that's what he got me was for my anniversary. Um, let's see. So let's get right into this. I... We got snow. We got a lot of snow. And I told my husband, I says, you're going to have to buy me a snowblower. I says, I may only use it a couple of times a year, but whenever he's out of town, it snows. And I'm the one that's out shoveling snow. And then when he comes home for the weekend, it doesn't snow. Although this weekend, we're supposed to get a huge storm. So we'll see. So what do I have? I'm going to quickly, quickly get into this stuff. I'm going to go over my finishes. I'm going to go over my whips. Um, something that I made yesterday, um, shout outs I forgot to do last week, I think. If I repeat them, then I'm repeating them. Because where I did my two videos last week, and I can't remember what I did and what. Sorry. So I'm going to do those shout outs again, or maybe for the first time. I don't know, because I didn't go back and watch. Um, I have a little bit of haul. Um, talk, I'm going to talk about a quilt retreat I'm going to. Show you a quilt and my plans for the week. Okay, so let's get into finishes. finishes. I finished Toy Store. Um, what I did different. Okay, so I, I'm doing these all in DMC floss. The floss that called, the DMC floss that called for here was like a brownish red. And to me, it blended in too well. So, and then... Plus, it was supposed to be used for the cardinal and the little poinsettia plant here and the red on here. And I'm like, I don't want a brown cardinal. And I didn't want a brown door. Sorry. So, I substitute out and I use 3777 because that was used on another chart and I had it already in the bag with all my other flosses. So, that's what I used. And then I did... Um, white beads on some of the snowflakes so you can see the snowflakes but then i did the white beads right here right there it's supposed to be red stitches i put red beads and then it's supposed to be a yellow stitch for the light in the lamppost and i did a gold bead so there it is it is finished my only finish for the week that's it so let's go on to whips um, let's see. Sorry, I am pulling things out of bags as I'm showing you, and I'm gonna put them back in bags. It just saves a lot on cleaning up afterwards. It saves a lot of time. So I am working on Shepherd's Bush stocking. It is this one is Reed stocking, I believe. I think. Now his coat. Sorry, I keep going back and forth. Sorry. Is supposed to be a light blue 
I am using all of the DMC called for threads um, and then the conversion because it does have some fancy floss in it and I'm not using that. Um, the coat is blue. It's like a light blue. And when I pulled the flosses for it, they were gray. Not even like a blue gray. They were like gray gray. So I actually pulled a different color for his coat. And I am using 159 is the color I'm using. And this is where I am at. This is just part of his coat. So not a whole lot of progress and not a whole lot that you can tell what it actually is. But it is coming along nicely. Um, the next thing is I didn't really think I had that many whips until I started going through what I had done, what I had worked on, and I do have quite a few. So the next one I have is I told you that I participate in the Friday off the grid needle arts virtual stitch in. If I can on Fridays, if and I did have a little bit of time. I did have grandkids this past Friday, but um, I had them situated watching, um, I don't know, I think they were watching cartoons or something, I don't know. And so why they were doing that, just before bedtime, we kind of had some quiet time, and why they were doing that, I worked on this. Now, not a whole lot of progress. Um, let me quickly just show you what I'm doing. I'm working on the house. I want to do the house first and then I can work on all the fun stuff afterwards. So, um, when I showed you last time, I had the house, I had all of this done and I had this outlined. And so I just had to fill in this right here and I had to fill in right here. And then there was two rows of stitches that went along the bottom and two rows on this side. That I did finish so the roof is done the roof is done so um, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to work on this this Friday or not um, my husband did say something about wanting to go out for our anniversary this weekend or I don't know we'll see so if I if I'm home and not doing anything I'll work on this and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go on to the the body of the house now and I'm going to do all the outline so that when I, because there's a lot of just filling in. So I'm going to do all the outline so that, you know, when I work on it, I can just sit down and just fill in and not even have to pay attention to what I'm doing, really. So there's that. <coughs> Excuse me. I still am sick. Uh-oh. I'm losing stuff. Sorry. Got to pick it up. Um... I don't know what I was saying. Okay. Oh, I still have a cold. So if I cough, I'm sorry. If I blow my nose, I'm sorry. But I'm not stopping the video and I'm not editing. I don't edit my videos. What you see is what you get. So, um, Okay. So then the next thing I worked on was Little House Needle, Little House Needleworks um, Town Church. Which is that one. I started this one. And this is number six in this series. Like I said, I am going in order of just how they are. I'm not, I'm not, so when I get to the tree lot, which was the most popular one this year, then I get to it. Um, and this is where I'm at. Damn it. So, um, the house and all the snow are all in the same color. And it's pretty much all connected, so I'm going to probably get all that done first. Get all the white done first, and then I'll go ahead and add all the fun colors. So anyway, that's where I'm at on that one. And then the other thing I worked on was my Nail Hill Kit ornament. Now, I am really, really, really struggling with this one. I lost my needle minder. I am really struggling on this one. And um, this is what it looks like. I think there's set six in the set. I am going to do eight of them, so I'm going to have to repeat two of the patterns. This one is Jingles. 
So this is where I'm at. Let me, this is where I'm at. When I showed this the last time, well, that didn't work, did it? <laughs> okay, when I showed this the last time, I had the scarf done. Well, the red on the scarf. It's not completely done, but I had this red done, and I had part of his face done. Like, just a little tiny bit of his face. So his face is pretty much done, except for um, his nose and his, his mouth and his eyes. And then this, I started working on his sweater and I worked this on this on the 25th, on the 25th. I am on the 25th of every month. I am going to work on these and when it gets down to crunch time, then I'll have to work on them more. But, um, that's my plan because I'm getting really tired of working on winter stuff and I'm doing the hometown holidays and I'm doing the stockings. So between, you know, winter and Christmas, I'm just getting tired of working on winter stuff all the time. But, um, okay, so my struggle is, it's on perforated paper. This is, I've never, I've never stitched on perforated paper. And I'm having, to me, it doesn't look right, but everybody keeps telling me to keep going because once it, once you get it done and you add the beads, it all actually comes together and it does look right. So I'm going to keep plugging away on this and using the perforated paper. But, um, I'm also having, oh, it's not that I have a hard time holding it. It's just, to me, it's awkward just holding it in my hand and not having something to hold on to, like the hoop or, you know, or the cue snap. So I was watching Danielle, um, Citarista. I want her videos and she did a heart. I believe it was a meal help kit. Maybe it may not. I, I am not 100% sure, but she did a heart for Valentine's day and it is done on perforated paper. And she used a small set of, of stretcher bars. And what she had done is she had put some, some kind of a tape and I'm going to have to go back and look at her video to see what kind of tape, um, she used. But she put tape along the edges just to kind of reinforce it. And then she thumbtacked it to her stretcher bar. And I think I'm going to do that. I actually went on 23 stitch to order the stretcher bars because I don't want, I only want the size that will work for these. And they were, which is five and three quarters inch. Because this is six by six. And so I want the five and three quarter inch square stretcher bars. <coughs> And I'm going to try that to see if it, it makes this go a little bit easier for me as far as holding it. But, um, I did, I did have to pick out some stitches. I had to pick out all of this because I was off by one and I thought I'm, I'm actually off by one in another spot, but I think I can fudge it and make it work. But this up here, I couldn't, I had to take it out and redo it. So that's where I'm at on that one. If you have any tips on working with perforated paper, I would gladly accept them because I have some ideas. It's just, I, I really, really, really want to do these for um, my grandkids. And I, I, cause I thought about switching it out to fabric industries and fabric, but I really like I really like it on the paper, but I'm just really struggling with it. And I don't know if it's just me or I don't know. So if you have any tips for stitching on perforated paper, please link them below. Okay. So the other, or not link them, not link them below, just, um, comment below. Yeah, that's what I meant. Sorry. Okay. I have one other whip I am working on. And this is, this was one of my 12 days of Christmas starts and okay, let me kind of go back here. So I showed you the fabric last week that I wanted to make some project bags that I was going to use for project bags. Okay. Now I'm not one that can just do one and be done with it because I knew I wanted several of these, but if I do just one, I would probably never make any more. I would just do the one. 
and that was the case when I made these project bags. And and this is this is one of Vana's. This is from Vana's tutorial. Um, so if you're interested in this, she you can go into um, you can either go onto her blog or onto her YouTube channel under the Twisted Stitcher and get the instructions for making these. But anyway, so I knew if I made just one of these, I would only make one because for me to sit down and do things like this, I have to be in the mood. And I mean, I can come in and quilt, but to sew is, a, is kind of a different, it's, it's different. I don't know how to explain it, but it's different. Anyway, so when I made these, I made 10 of them. Yeah. Um, I think I gave one away. Actually, I think I made 11 because I gave one away in a giveaway. And then I've sent two to my, to a couple of stitchy friends. I sent one to each, to two different stitchy friends and then I made one for my daughter and then I made me seven. So I did 11 of them. So anyway, so anyway, I made those. So like I said, I cannot just do one. I have to do a whole bunch because if I don't do a whole bunch, then I only have one and that's it. So I wanted these bags. And so I bought that fabric I showed you with the farmhouses and stuff on it. And I had enough to do um, four, I think. I think. Anyway, and I thought, well, I want some more. So I just went through my fabric stash and I picked out some more fabric. And I had my daughter come over and I says, pick out. I'll make you one. So I made 10. I made 10 of these bags yesterday. Will I ever make these again? Nope. Were they hard? Nope. Once I got past the zipper part, I have never, ever, ever put a zipper in anything in my life. And so I had this 13 inches strip and it said to put this 14 inch um, zipper in it. And I'm like, how in the heck is that going to work? And if I do it, it's going to go over. I'm going to sew over the zipper. Won't it break my needle? So I took a picture of the strip of fabric with the the zipper that was too long and I texted my sister the picture and I'm like help so she called me and she kind of explained how zippers work and yeah I can you can sew right over the zipper as long as you don't hit the middle part you can sew over the zipper who knew anyway so this pattern is on um it's a YouTube video by making life count I do not know her first name. I'm sorry. I apologize that I don't know her first name. I will in the description box below. I will um, try to link her um, video. It is Making Life Count, video number six, and she does the tutorials. She does have printed instructions in the description box, which I printed those out. And then she has, um, or she has written instructions, and I printed them out. And then she also has the tutorial. The, the tutorial is only about um, 10 minutes long. Um, I will say you do, you do have to have so some sewing knowledge to make these. Like I said, I struggled with the zipper. I sewn, you know, quilted for years. I've never put a zipper in, so I did struggle with the zipper. Once I got this figured out, the zipper part, these bags flew. They were easy, super easy. Put them kind of in an assembly line, and had them done. So here they are. This one, um, fabric for my stash. When I cut this fabric, I did not really even think about it that it is a directional fabric. So my flags are sideways, but it's okay. It's just for me and I don't care. And then that's the fabric I use for the inside. It's just a cream color with a blue flower on it. Um, and I like how they turned out. Like I said, I'll never make them. I'm not gonna sell them. Um, I made them for me. I made one for my daughter. Sorry. I made one for my daughter. Um, I made me, I think I made me six. I don't know how many I made. I made me a lot. So anyway, they're there. So in this one, I have, I can't remember if I said this one. So I have some starts that I started for my 12 days of Christmas. And I decided I really just want to start working on them. So I'm just going to put them into, I have a, um, a cart. Everybody's, I'm sure, has seen these, these carts. I have one of these carts. You get them at Michael's. And I keep it out um, 
in my stitchy spot in my living room and I just have my current works in pro progress on this cart. So I'm putting these out into my current work progress so I can just work on them if I want to. So this is Heartstring Samplery or yeah, Cross Stitch Nation. And so this is another whip I have. Um, let me get rid of that string. So when I when I started on my 12 days of, of Chris on my 12 days of Christmas starts, I had just this the this bluish green done. That's what I got done. So anyway, last night I went in and I outlined her skirt and it's just all now filled in with this green. I am using the DMC floss. It does call 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 for weeks. Weeks Dye Works, Gentle Arts, and Classic Color Works. And then it does have the DMC conversion in it. And I am doing just the DMC. And the reason why is because when I started this, I didn't have any of the overdyed floss. So um, I just started with DMC. I, someone else, I just watched a floss tube video um, within the last week or so that is also stitching this. And they are using the DMC conversions. And they actually have a lot more done. And it, it looks nice. I like it. So yeah, so yeah, those are kind of odd colors for her dress, but yeah, her dress is kind of odd colors. So anyway, so that is what I have in the first bag I made. Second bag I have is this one. Um, let me show you the inside of it. The inside. This is just fabric I had in my stash, my fabric stash. And in it is another 12 days of Christmas start um, that I really just want to keep to work on. And it is by Santa, it's by Berta Gervais. It's called Shepherd's Sampler. Let's see if I can get it without the glare. Well, there you go. Um, I'm not even going to show you my start because it's just very minimal. But I saw Heidi Cran. In one of her very first videos, she was show, she showed this, and I just fell in love with this this. So I got it and I started it um, for the 12 days of Christmas, and I decided to throw it into this project bag, and it's gonna go on my current whips cart. Um, another one I did is this is the fabric I showed. <coughs> Excuse me, in my last video, and there's the inside of it. Huh? And I made two. So I have two of them. And I don't have anything in these ones right now. I don't know. I do have, um, I've started getting the patterns for the Christmas, Farmhouse Christmas and Chalk on the Farm. Um, but I'm not going to start those for a while. So there's nothing in these bags yet. Another one is this bag. Isn't that cute? I think I did a quilt out of this fabric. And I had a ton, a ton left over. So I have enough fabric to do. I actually made two project bags using this fabric. Um, but I, I still have enough I can use it for a quilt if I wanted to. So on the inside of this one is just fabric for my stash. That I had and in this one is another another one of my 12 days of Christmas starts and I really 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 want to get this one done I've had this chart for a long long time a long time, long time. probably since it first came out I've had it um but it's called free range by the cricket collection and it's this eggs and so because I have had this chart for a long time and I really wanted to make it, I really wanted to get it done. I used it as my 12 days of Christmas starts, but the fabric I was using was just a 14 count Ada. And I don't know the brand, the color was natural. And I did, I had this, you can't even, this, even the picture here isn't very good, but I had part of this G done and I had only worked on it one day, but I wasn't liking it because the color, the, the white was not really showing up. And I, I thought, well, I could keep going and maybe hopefully once I add the other colors, then the white would show up better. But then I thought, no, I'm not going to take that chance. So I decided I was going to unpick all of the stitches and um, 
coffee and tea dyeing that fabric. And so I started unpicking it and I caught one of the threads from the fabric and I ended up putting a tiny hole in that fabric. So I, the fabric is still usable because I can use on either side of that hole because the hole is like right in the center. So I can use either side for like an ornament or whatever. So I was going through my fabric and I decided I was going to coffee and um, tea dye some fabric to make some fabric a little bit darker because I wanted it to be so I, the letters would show up. So I decided if I'm going to do fabric, if I'm going to you know make up the tea and coffee to, to stain it or dye it, then I'm just going to do a whole bunch. So I, I took some white Ada. I don't know the brands. I took some white Ada and I took some ivory Ada and I threw it in the pot. The white Ada took the stain, took the tea and coffee dyeing better than the ivory did. The ivory was still, it's still really pretty. It just didn't go as dark. And I guess I could have left it in the pot longer, but um, I didn't because I left it. I, this actually, this, okay, this was the white and it went really dark. I am, hang on just a second. I'm going to grab a piece of the ivory. So this is all the fabric. So I said, figure if I'm going to make up a pot, I might as well dice dye it, do a whole bunch of fabric. So this was the ivory and this was the white. So look how much darker it went. It's still really pretty. This ivory is really pretty. Um, it does have some modeling in it. This is a big piece. I don't know what happened here. It kind of has a a couple of those actually but on the actually this side's not as bad but they're on the corners and that and I can look around them but um it smells good too <laughs> I love the smell of coffee I don't drink coffee um not like I, I drink like the fancy coffees but I love the smell of coffee here is another piece of the ivory um so you can see, and this was white. Isn't that crazy? How, anyway, I don't know. And it could just be the brand of fabric. But anyway, so I did a whole bunch of it. <coughs> so anyway, since I can't use that fabric and I'm, it's going to be a start anyway. So this is going to be the fabric I'm using for it. And I can't decide one side's a little bit darker than the other and if I'm going to use the darker of the two sides so it was a it was a start it was a whip now it's not now it's going to be a new start and I really want to work on it so it is going to go into my cart of current whips so that I can work on it so anyway so I made that one that bag and then the other one that matches it um, I put a different color of lining in it color lining so and then in this one I this is another piece that I dyed and I want to start this this is the March um, in their series they have series one for every month this is the March one even though it says daffodils this is their March chart so and so I need to get it kitted up so I'm going to I'm going to work on that. I'm going to start that. And then these are the other two bags I did. This, I made one for my daughter. This is the fabric that she chose out of my fabric stash. She likes purple, and this has purples in it. I don't have a lot of purple in my fabric. Um, but this is what she chose. And then it just has, it's a lettering, and the lettering is in purple. Or the words, it's got words. So I made her one, and I had enough that I made me one also. And then this one I put in, um, it, this is a Blackbird design, and it's one of their anniversaries. But this this one has a bonus chart in it, and I am going to do this one. And I am going to eventually do this one, and when I get ready to kit it up and start it, I will tell you the story about that one. But this one is the one I'm going to do, because I'm doing one for 
both my mom, my birth mom, my adopt, my mom that raised me, um, and my two grandmas. And so this is the one I'm going to do for my mom, the mom that raised me. And I thought it was really pretty. And it reminded me of her. So I need to get it kitted up. So anyway, I just stuck it in this project bag. So yeah, so like I said, I don't make one, I make ten, but I'm not making any more. So that's it. Okay, so on to my haul. I don't have a whole lot. Um, I did get my floss of the month from Color and Cotton. This is going to be my last one because I did cancel the, um, the subscription to it. But these are, let me see if I can find this paper. These colors are not coming out true to what they really are. This one is actually a brown and gray variegated, and it looks green. This one is actually kind of a pinkish brown, and it looks like it's not. Um, it's, this one is a terracotta color. Um, this one is kind of a purpley color, I guess. This one is, it's kind of a navy gray, I guess. But anyway, so it's my last one because I canceled this one. Um, I explained in my last video because I'm doing, I I'm doing, I have the Victoria Mottos. If you want to do a really good floss of the month club, do the Victoria Motto ones. Just type in Victoria Motto in um, Google. And it will bring up her blog page and you just how you join is you just email her and her name is Nancy Nancy uh, Turner and hers I think it's for six it was like 13 I'm not sure it's like 1350 for six or for $28 you can do 12 and so I upped my I canceled this one and then I upped mine to do the 12 instead of the um, six and I'm not gonna do it I, I'm only gonna do it for a few months and then once I get all the floss that I want then I will I will cancel it I'll probably do it through maybe the rest of the year and then I'll cancel it but anyway so I got those it is nice floss these are these are nice flosses um what else did I get so Okay, with Lizzie Kate announcing her retirement, you cannot get Lizzie Kate's anywhere. And these charts that I ordered, I have been actually wanting them for months. And it's I am not on this Lizzie Kate frenzy that I have to get all these Lizzie Kate charts because the ones that I have, I really have the ones that I want. And but I've been wanting these for months. And when I say months, probably for six months. And every time I go to order them, I can never find them. They're always out of stock. I can find websites that have them. Oh, that was just weird. That was weird. Anyway, um, I don't know if you saw that. That was like something was more true flying past me. Anyway, um, so I have, so every time I go onto one, two, three stitch, which is my go-to place to order, they're always out of stock. So um, I was on Down Sunshine. Down Sunshine. I was on their website, and they had these in stock. Well, okay, let me back up. I placed an order with One Two Three Stitch because they had the winter one. This is what I'm gonna show you. They had the winter one, and I ordered it because it was in stock. But by the time they shipped it, it was out of stock. Because then in the process of all that is when she announced her retirement. And then, you know, everybody's on that Lizzie Kate frenzy. So I'm still waiting for the winter one to come in. So I should get it. And they said I should have it probably this next week. So Dan Sunshine Lane had the autumn one and the summer one. And so I, I ordered them. Yeah, I did order them after she announced her retirement. But... I wasn't scrambling to find them. It's just that I have been wanting these for a long time. And yeah. Anyway, so I have these two. The winter one will be coming. 
hopefully I can get the spring one because if everybody buys them all up, who knows? Because there's just been so many rumors about what they're actually going to do. And I think she came out and said that they're going to stop production March 31st. So they have a lot in inventory right now, but they're not producing anymore. So I don't know. I don't know what the story is. You just hear, you hear all kinds of things. So anyway, I got those two. And then I got the last two charts that I need for the Shepherd's Bush. Um, one, two, three stitch has been out of stock on these. It didn't sunshine line when I saw that they had these. They had these ones, so I ordered these also. So now I have all of the stockings. I think there's 21 stockings total. And I have all the charts. So this one is Lulu, Lula's stocking. And this one is Slater's stocking. And um, I think I only have charm packs for maybe two or three more stockings to get. And then I'll have all the charm packs also. So there's that one. And then, um, so then I was also on down sunshine lane. This is a whole different order because I have been wanting, this is also Lizzie Kate and I have been wanting these charts for a while now also. And it seems like every time I tried to order a one, two, three stitch, they would have, one, there's three charts. It's, a, it's one of their mystery samples. There was three ch charts in their mystery samples, in their mystery sampler. And it seems like every time I went to, to order one, they didn't have one or the other. And I was afraid, I didn't want to order one and take a chance I couldn't get any other ones. So um, I was on Down Sunshine Lane looking and they had it. And, you, and I bought all three together. So they had... The price was for all three plus the charm pack. And so, or the embellishment pack. So I got all three charts. This one is the mystery sampler things unseen. And that's what it looks like. So I do have those. I have all three of those. And that was all I wanted from Lizzie Kate, you know. And and I, like I said, I was on a Lizzie Kate um frenzy to try to buy up all the Lizzie Kate's. These are ones I've just wanted for a long time and never could find them in stock. And so got them in stock, got them. Um, oh, I just noticed it has a piece of white rickrack. I wonder where it goes on here. Oh, I don't know where it, where it goes. Anyway, sorry. This is my concentration. So I got those. And then, um, okay, this is a chart that I have wanted for a while and then I didn't want. So it's been on my wish list and then off my wish list and on and on. So it's gone back and forth. And the reason why is because I wasn't sure that I really liked it. And it's, then I saw somebody and I don't know who it was. It was a Foss, Foss tube video I watched within the last couple of weeks. And they were working on it. And it was beautiful. Just gorgeous. And so I decided, yes, I do want it. So I went ahead and purchased I purchased, purchased this and another chart from 123Stitch. And I got them. I think they came in the mail yesterday. And this is it. This is by Brenda Gervais. And it's called Heart and Hand. It's that sampler. And I think the reason I don't want, I don't like it, I didn't like it, and I kept, was wishy-washy about if I wanted it or not, is because of the fabric it's done on. Because when you look at it, it's just really washed out. And the person who I saw doing it, I wish I could remember who it was, but the person who was doing it was, um, I think doing hers on a, a, a lighter, because this fabric is really dark, and she was doing hers on a lighter fabric. And I don't think it was blue. I think she was doing it on some kind of a neutral color. And it was so pretty. So I ordered that. And then the other thing I ordered was from Plum, Plum Street Samplers, American Sampler. And this is also one that I was kind of back and forth whether I wanted it or not. And I decided that I just, I did want it. And... So anyway, that's my haul. 
Um, okay, so two more things I'm going to talk about and then I'm going to be done here. This is going to be quick, this part of it. Okay, so in June, I am going to a quilt retreat. I went last year for the first time. Um, my It's in the same town that my brother and my sister-in-law live in, that brother that passed away. Um, so I'm going to go again this year. And my sister-in-law always sends me um, things I can take. We have a quilt shop, a fabric store, and we have a... I don't know what it is. It's where I take my quilts there. They have a couple of long arms that they do quilting for people, and that's mainly what they do. But they also sell a very minimum amount of fabric there. And then once in a while, you can take a class there. So anyway, so I take my quilts there to get quilted. And so I, anyway, she sent me flyers and these things to take to these three different places in my town to advertise this quilt festival. And it's called, it's a Penguin Quilt Walk Festival is what it's called, and it is a quilt retreat, and they have other things going on. It's um, a four-day thing, and um, anyway, it's not an all-inclusive retreat. It is one that you sign up for the retreat, and then you need to uh, book your own motel rooms or whatever. Um, they do have several motels in the town, several um, small motels. And there is another town that's about 30 miles away that does have a few motels. And then there is a bigger town that is about an hour away. And they have a lot of motels there, motels and hotels. So, um, and they don't provide food. They do, you can purchase tickets for lunch. Um, I didn't do the lunch last year, but the people that did do the lunch, they said that it was really good and really worth what they had spent for the lunch. And, um... Anyway, so if you're interested in this, they do have half-day classes and full-day classes. So the half-day classes are in the mornings, afternoons, and evenings. And the full-day classes usually start in the mornings, and then they break for lunch, and then you do go back for the afternoon. And last year, I did three classes. I did a full-day class and then two half-day classes. To me, it was too much. Um, this year, I'm only doing one full-day class. And then... I don't know, they posted something yesterday that is a half a day class and I might, I'm thinking about doing it and it's a bag you can make and it, it's, I would use it for a project bag. I haven't decided if I'm going to do that. Um, the prices are very reasonable. Last year for a half day class was $20 for a full day class was $40. That does not include your supplies. Um, most of the classes you can either buy kits from the instructor or you can, the instructor will email you with the fabric requirements and the cutting requirements because you do cut your fabric before you go. And so you can buy your own fabric. Um, this year for the class that I am taking, I, once I get the material list for it, I think I have the fabric for it. So I don't even have to go buy any. But anyway, so if you're interested in this, um, I will send you one of these. If I will put my email below. Just email me and say that you're interested in um, one of these flyers. Whether you go to the retreat or not, it doesn't matter. Um, but if you're interested in one of these flyers, let me know. Email me and so I can get your address. And um, and I will pop one of these into the mail to you. Um, she did send me quite a few, but I have, I have taken a quite a few to the different stores. And I did keep out... A whole bunch so that I can pass them out to people that I know around here and so if you'd like one like I said but once they're gone they're gone so um, but if you're interested send me an email with your address and I will pop one of those in the mail to you okay so and this does just just I'm going to go back to this a little bit this on the back of it it does tell the story of how the quilt festival um, it tells the reason why the quilt festival is was started and it's kind of a, it's a big deal in this town. Um, so it's kind of, it has some history. And then this on the front, it has the dates, their website, which I'll put below and um, the schedule of events that's happening. So anyway, interest in that, let me know. Next thing I'm gonna show you is a quilt. Okay, so this quilt is not very big. It is, I have fully finished it. Sorry, I smacked myself in the head. Is not very big. It is a lap size quilt. Um, perfect if you're sitting on the couch watching TV or whatever um, and you want to throw a blanket over your legs and stuff. But it is not like, I, 
I'm 5'2", and it doesn't, it's not head to toe on me. Anyway, um, now, I am not, I quilt what I like, just like I cross-stitch what I like. I have an eclectic style, I guess, is what you can say. Some stuff, you know, like, I like cutesy stuff, like Lizzie Cates, I like reproduction samplers, I like, um, primitive stuff. I, it, my taste in cross-stitch is eclectic. Same with my quilting style. I, I am not a modern quilting, quilted, I'm not a modern quilter and I am not a traditional quilter. Sometimes I use modern patterns with traditional fabric. Sometimes I use traditional, um, patterns with modern fabric. So anyway, so my style is eclectic. I just, I quilt what I like. I buy fabric what I like. Anyway, so that being said, here is my quilt. And I, I'm not, hopefully you guys will be able to see this. You're not going to be able to see the whole quilt. But there we go. There it is. Now, I am going to bring it up closer so you can see it closer. So, um, I had bought this fabric. And it is a directional fabric. And I was very, 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 very careful to, sorry, I'm trying to, to make all of my owls, so when you held it up, they're all standing up. Very careful. And this block, the way that it was put together, so this, I'm going to say, so this, all of this in the blue is like a block. And then, no, how does that go? It's not. This is a block and this is a block. I don't know. I can't remember. It's been, it's been a minute since I've made this quilt. Anyway, so I get it. <laughs> so my point is, is if you make a mistake on the direction of the owls, it's not like you can just go in and pick this part of it and resew it. You have to take the entire block apart. So I had the quilt all done and except for like two blocks. And one of my owls is upside down. <laughs> I'm like, I am not picking out because I would have had to pick out the entire block just to flip this around. So I have one square that my owl is upside down. Who cares? It doesn't matter. It's not like I'm doing this for show. Anyway, since this quilt was so small, I ended up having extra of this, this fabric. This is kind of a, like a salmon color. I don't know what colors, what you guys are seeing, but it's like a salmon color. So I put a border around it and then I had bought this fabric to do, to originally do a border around it. And I ended up making this border wider just so. I could have a little bit bigger of a quilt anyway and then on the back I always when I take it into my quilter they always ask what kind of batting do you want and I always choose warm and natural um, it's just my preferred batting that I like um, to me it's very light but yet it can be very warm so I can put it in a quilt and it can be a quilt you can throw you over throw you over you if you're if you're taking a nap in the summertime or it is warm for in the winter. So it, anyway, I don't know. It kind of, to me, it kind of adjusts. I always put flannel on the back of my quilts. doesn't matter if it's a quilt for summer, winter, fall, spring, whatever. I always put flannel on the back. So that was my flannel for my backing. And then I always, I should say always, 90% of the time, whatever my backing is, is what I use for my binding. And I, that actually is pretty dang good on my binding. Pretty dang good. Um, and then I'm going to see if I can show you how my quilter quilted it for me. I don't know if you can get a good, if I can get a good picture of this. She did flowers. Can you see that flower? Anyway, that's how she quilted it for me. 
Um, and she just used a white thread on the front and a gray on the back. They always try to match the fabric on the back for the thread. And then I just chose a white thread for the front. But anyway, that's my quilt. So, um, I think that's it for today. Keep in mind, keep in mind, I really am trying to get my videos just to be for about 45 minutes of the maximum. I'm a little bit over, but that's okay. Um, so plans for the week, I am going to work on the hometown holidays church. Tomorrow is the first day of the month. So I will start on Santa's village. Um, I think the house on that one is, um, the post office. North Pole Post Office or something like that. I can't remember what the name of it is. And tonight, today is the last day of the month, so I will work on my Halloween rules. Um, I, I told you guys about how I'm going to try a different um, rotation. So I will work on my Halloween rules. I continue to work on my Shepherd's Bush um, stocking. And then probably throw in one of those others, um, either Cross Stitch Nation or that Shepherd Sampler, I think is what it's called that into it um the dog's barking at something outside so anyway that so that's my plans for this week so i will hopefully be back to you next week have a good weekend bye